investigation into the tainted water tragedy at Walkerton revealed that there were many factors that contributed to that tragedy. The province has addressed each of these factors in what they refer to as a multi-barrier approach to drinking water management. We are working with the province, our municipalities and members of the public to prevent the overuse and contamination of drinking water supplies. Protecting water at its source in lakes, rivers and underground aquifers is the last piece of this multi-barrier approach. The goal of the program is to protect municipal drinking water supplies. First, we identify vulnerable areas relative to those drinking water supplies. Second, we identify the risks to the quality or quantity of those municipal water supplies. And finally, we develop policies to ensure that new risks do not show up on the landscape and that we reduce the existing risks. Well, I really can't think of anything that's more important than, than drinking water source protection. I mean, it's a, it's a vital service for the residents and businesses of the region, and it's uh, critical that we protect those resources for not only the existing residents and businesses, but also for future generations. The focus of this program is on four vulnerable areas, the first of which is significant recharge areas like the Oak Ridge Marine. These are the portions of the landscape where water seeps into the ground and replenishes the aquifers that municipalities and others rely upon for drinking water. The second vulnerable area are areas of high aquifer vulnerability. These are the portions of the landscape where the aquifer is close to the surface and more susceptible to contamination. The third type of vulnerable area is an intake protection zone. This is the portion of the lake and the landmass that contributes water to the surface water intake where municipalities draw surface water. The fourth vulnerable area is a wellhead protection area. This represents the portion of the landscape from which a municipality captures its groundwater. The Clean Water Act is a unique piece of legislation in Ontario in that much of the responsibility has been downloaded to local groups of stakeholders. In our region, we have 22 Source Protection Committee members plus a chair. One third of the representatives are members of the public, one third represent the economic interests of the region, and one third are municipal members. We also have a First Nations representative on our local committee. What makes this committee so good is that it's multi-stakeholder and we learn from each other. We've got people from the aggregate industry, from the golf course industry, we've got agriculture represented, the public at large, the health unit and the province. So everybody is uh, putting their ideas forward and learning from each other so that we can put out the best, most effective and practical product that we can. The Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority has been designated the lead agency in our region and we're playing a coordination and facilitation role in the development of technical assessments and source protection plans. We're doing this in partnership with the Nottawasaga Valley CA, the Severn Sound Environmental Association and watershed municipalities. People should care about source protection because it's protecting the water that they're drinking, it's protecting their family's health, it's protecting the environment and it's cost effective. It's much easier to protect water from becoming contaminated than it is to try to fix it. Groundwater is 40 times more expensive to clean up than it is to protect in the first place. We all play a role collectively to help protect our drinking water. In turn, that drinking water will continue to take care of us. Visit us online at www.lsrca.on.ca.